So let's talk a bit about uh, Pegasus and NSO. So Pegasus is, has been around a lot in the news recently, and, and they are um, they have capabilities of infecting devices remotely, and depending on the time, sometimes they have zero clicks, sometimes it's one clicks, but it's actually really hard to defend against. I mean, if you get a link that is that says unsubscribe, and most people would just want to unsubscribe, do not get these spam messages, and simply somebody would be hacking into their device. And so we've seen that from this group. We have seen um, full zero clicks used by this group. Uh, we've seen deception uh, capabilities uh, by this group and log tampering too. And so we've been tracking them for a while. Um, the currently patched vulnerability is actually not the same as the one that they were using uh, at least not what we've seen on the uh, Al Jazeera devices at the time. And uh, we actually caught them through other ways, but uh, we might talk about that later. So what are the implications before we do a deeper dive uh, into, into that? Uh, what are the implications of a hacked phone by Pegasus? Basically, they have capabilities from seeing your camera, uh, getting your pictures, videos, SMS, 2FA tokens, and yeah, microphone, GPS location, all of the things that you would expect from a compromised uh, phone, as well as what's uh, perceived to be encrypted content. Once the phone is hacked, there isn't really such a thing as encryption. I mean, if you just take a screenshot, you get the actual content the user sees, as well as you can also decrypt many of the things. Uh, um, on the device. So end-to-end um, -end encryption doesn't really work if your phone is compromised. It's, it's important to know that. But let's talk about what was found. So there was attacks on journalists and media organizations. We can confirm that too. Uh, we've seen that on Al Jazeera. We can confirm that the phones that we were checking. Some of them were definitely compromised. There was also a list of 50,000 potential targets of Pegasus. Uh, it's unclear currently if that list contains uh, devices that were uh, uh, that all of them were compromised, or was it just for tracking, or is it related or not? So there's some uh, denial coming from NSO group on this list. But I mean, what can we expect from an offensive security group? Um, so uh, uh, other things that we have seen, uh, there was one vulnerability, only one, that was patched. Um, as a result of these attacks. We wrote potential vulnerability because it's unclear if this is actually the way they entered into the device. Um, but it's only one, which is interesting because in an attack, especially on iPhones, you need multiple vulnerabilities as part of the exploit chain to fully compromise a device remotely, to, to fully take over a device remotely. And, um, only one vulnerability was patched, meaning that the attackers really have the entire chain for themselves and they only need to replace one vulnerability in order to continue their operations. So everything that was published, including IOCs, I mean, that's meaningless for, for NSO. They can really replace that uh, within um, you know, minutes. Um, same for, for websites like DNS, uh, like CNC servers, that can all be replaced very fast. Um, the vulnerability that was patched, I mean, if that's what they were using, yes, that definitely caused some damage to them. But as far as we understand, the current standard in the offensive security market, which we've been tracking, is three backup vulnerabilities to every part of the exploit chain, meaning that really zero damage was done to NSO as a result of this discovery. Um, so what can we do? We can actually uh, keep monitoring these guys and keep tracking their activities, also finding if devices were compromised by them or not. And we definitely have those capabilities uh, right now, but it's, it's also at the same time not trivial at all. If you want to read more information about this, so both uh, Citizen Labs and Amnesty did an excellent job of writing and documenting uh, these vulnerabilities. There's also a blog at Zacops where we 
published some of the information that was found during the analysis of uh, of the uh, Pegasus attacks on Al Jazeera devices uh, when when they uh, worked with us to analyze those devices. So we have some uh, more information there about some of the events that we have seen. Um, so that's that's basically this part. We are not going to repeat anything that is written in Amnesty's blog. We are not going to repeat anything that's written in Citizen Lab's blog. I mean, for that, those resources are already publicly available. Um, so there is there is no point in doing that. So let's talk about what was not found. The entire chain that Pegasus used was not found. Only a single vulnerability, maybe. Um, but really, there is no information on how they uh, uh, bypassed the ASLR. There is no information about uh, the kernel exploit that the attackers used. Um, anything about other vulnerabilities that they're using, backup vulnerabilities. Uh, also, how common it was. There is a list of 50,000 people, but is it really related to their list of targets? Or are there other lists? Are there other targets? Um, so basically, more things were not found uh, compared to what we think was found. Are there other companies like NSO? So NSO is very popular. Uh, I mean, it was originally a negative press for them once they were caught by um, Citizen Labs and 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 Link and uh, Lookout in 2016, 2015, and. But it was actually a very good PR for them. I mean, it was bad because their customers didn't want them to be in the news. But for them, it was actually really good. Like business were, were, was booming afterwards. They got very popular. A lot of um, clients saw their name in the news that they have those capabilities. So as a result of that, they actually gained more clients. So this is one of the reasons of why we do not publish the names of companies. Once we are able to to do attribution, um, another one is because attribution is actually extremely hard, uh, and it's it's almost never hundred percent. But even once we get to hundred percent attribution, we're refraining from naming the exact companies because it's it's it actually makes them uh, like a, a free PR uh, to these guys. So yeah, this is one of the reasons why we're not doing that. But these are some companies that are already well known and that have been doing uh, offensive security operations. So besides NSO, there are companies like Variant, like Quadrim, like Psy Group, uh, Toka, and many others just in Israel. But there are also others in Italy, in Singapore, in Australia, in the US. Uh, I mean, there are probably about a hundred different offensive security companies, maybe even more. And many of them have mobile mobile capabilities. So this um, is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and while we are constantly hearing about NSO, there are actually many, many other uh, actors involved, uh, including individual uh, sellers of exploits, including uh, exploits brokerage firms. Uh, I mean, that's... It's a huge industry, a lot of vulnerabilities, and the current systems that we are currently using and we think are secure, actually not that secure. So that's that's uh, that, that's the primary challenge um, in looking into mobile attacks. So let's do a deeper dive into iOS 14.8. iOS 14.8 patched two vulnerabilities that were exploited in the wild. Now let's talk first about the definition of exploited in the wild. Once we found an attack that was exploited in the wild uh, with a mail zero click uh, back in 2020, Apple refused to write that it was exploited in the wild. Um, they claim that there is no evidence for that. I mean, what we've seen was actually pretty clear to us, and we insist that it was exploited in the wild, but they didn't want to write it down. So really not every vulnerability that was patched that was exploited, they're actually writing it down. If they do, then they're under some pressure or under some exact um, evidence that uh, uh, somebody was able to, to obtain, whether if in this case it was Citizens Labs that, that were able to obtain the exact file, or in, in another case on the same version, 
uh, an anonymous researcher. So who is this anonymous researcher? Is that like a real person? Is it a company? Is it a government? Or is it something else? Um, we don't know. We also don't know how many people were targeted by Pegasus and NSO. And also we don't know about this particular anonymous researcher uh, that uh, published this vulnerability. Like, I mean, we're just seeing a WebKit vulnerability that was patched. What about the kernel exploit? What about the chain? Is it the, the other vulnerabilities that were patched in previous versions or not? How many people? What are the IOCs? Uh, I mean, we're really getting zero transparency on attacks in the world. And, and security without transparency uh, is uh, challenging, uh, to say the least. Um, it's very, very problematic to be claiming that you're the most secure platform without actually being transparent about attacks. Uh, it, it definitely shows a wrong light on the platform. So hopefully things will get better. Uh, we see already that iOS 15 added some additional security features that will make it easier to find attacks, but at the same time, it's not there yet. So like iOS 15, I wouldn't call it secure. Um, I wouldn't call um, the latest Android version secure. And it's mostly not because they're not actually good. They're, they're doing a, a great job, both, both Google and Apple but because of the lack of visibility and the lack of capabilities of defenders to to do things so essentially every time you check a phone it's it's really fighting in a happy old battle where attackers have the advantage they get kernel access and you don't and that's really the entire story of analyzing mobile attacks so you really need to be very creative on what you do and how you analyze uh, mobile devices so how common it is, let's actually only examine the cases where Apple themselves wrote that this uh, was patched as a result of an exploit. We can see anything from, you know, iOS 14.4, 14.5.1, 14.7, 14 14.7.1, 14.8. Like the, almost in every single version of iOS, there is, um, vulnerabilities that were patched uh, as a result of attacks in the wild. So there are many, many other vulnerabilities that we have zero information about that are actively exploited. And going back to my first statement about mobile attacks are being scalable, many of these actors have capabilities of really infecting tens, if not hundreds of millions of devices at the push of a button and uh, as a result of just running a script. And we really have no guarantees that that didn't already happen. I mean, we've seen Xcode Ghost that infected 50 million devices, even more than that, um, uh, many years ago. That was, I think, um, 2014, 2015. So we have seen that already, like an, like an attack, indirect attack on tens of millions of devices. It didn't really capture much, but nobody captured the stage two of this. So. It's, it's unclear what was the exact uh, damage. But we are seeing attackers heavily invested in attacking iOS users. Um, and of course, the same also goes to Android. What we have seen, and this is actually a screenshot from our platform uh, of one of the devices. Uh, we've seen local privilege escalation exploit attempts multiple times uh, with NSO. Uh, we have seen the devices was acting in the wrong way. Uh, since then, we've been starting to collect additional information from the devices that actively helps us to, to find them way easier in a deterministic way. Uh, but I would say um, these devices uh, were absolutely compromised. It was very clear to us uh, within moments, uh, the system notified uh, Al Jazeera that these devices were compromised. Uh, so we, we actually didn't rely on any IOCs that were published later. Here you can see the process name, RS belongs to NSO. Uh, this is a, a further rescan of that device uh, down the road. But uh, we actually didn't use any IOCs to determine that this device uh, was uh, fully compromised. And one of the things uh, you can see in the Zekhoff's blog is actually covering one of the kernel panics that happened on that device. <clears throat> 